OK, what's, what's going on with C++? Why is it lazy? It's actually not. Uh, the usual disclaimer, code I show is slideware. I have personal opinions. You might share them or not. And I usually don't have universal solutions because they don't exist. Uh, the motivation for this talk is about six months ago, I talked about the C++ Swift interoperability. And I talked a little bit about Swift. And I showed some code. And I said, hey, there is this lazy keyword, which does lazy initialization of variables. And at the timestamp here, second 890, I said, in C++, you can make it your own. So, but it's in Swift, you have it out of the box. So then I get the question, how do you make this your own? And I thought, I, I will show this. So, so what is actually the, the lazy initialization? So it's deferred initialization. And when you see code, it's, it will be super clear. We have some value. And we have set if the value is already assigned. We have some function that is usually expensive to run. It takes time. And we don't need this value always. And then when we first time we, we access the value, we say, hey, if I don't have the value, I do this initializations. And then I say, I have, I have this value, so I don't need to do the work again. And then I just return this. So that's basically what's, what's going on here. So another question, maybe why do I ever need this? And I have already named one reason. If you have something that takes a lot of time, but you don't need it always. This is one reason. Another reason could be occasionally used like database connection. You want to have this connection close in your class or whatever, but you don't want to always instantiate it because you have data in the cache or whatnot. Or a scenario like this, where we'll monitor emergency last will. Emergency could be a lazy object. When you instantiate it, it cuts all traffic and does say, I don't take any data anymore. So something like this. And I like to model my stuff as types. That's an API decision. It's just one of possible ways to do it. But I do it like this. And this is what I show here. So the, the whole thing is easy with integers. I have already showed this. This is the same code as previously. But what is if I have basically something like this? Not an integer, but something that does something in the constructor. Then I need to, to do something. And you see, this is why I like to, to model these things as a type, because the, the details go away. You just use it. OK, there are two fast solutions you could think about, the unique pointer and optional. Anyone knows what could be a problem with those? Why would I not want to use unique pointer? No, we will initialize. We will care about it. That's the okay. Heap allocation, of course. When you are embedded space, then heap allocation is something you don't always want to pay for. And optional is simply not the right uh, vocabulary type, and it gives you also not the required uh, control, as we might see. But if you want to use it, it's also fine already. If you have no problem with heap, go with this, you're done. So let's explore a different solution when heap is not an option and optional is not the right choice. And let's start with a super quick implementation. And how do we start implementations? <coughs> this is now the JetBrains license reference, so I need someone who explains it. How, how do we start development? <laughs> Yay, you won. Exactly. We start, of course, with testing. And we do this. So we have our expensive whatever. For testing, I have just the initialization counter. And whenever I initialize it, it counts up. And it should never be higher than 1 in, for the thing I know. So this is my, my, my test data. And I make my first test. And it doesn't work. But that's expected, right? OK. So I said, I want to have the, the lazy type. So let's add the lazy type. Well, we don't have the template yet. So it doesn't exist. We, we add the template. We compile now. We can run the code. We get an uninitialized value, uh, variable. But that's fine. The code 
the test succeed. We are done. Oh. Yeah, go to lunch, come back, code review, that's garbage. Okay. We admit some shortcomings. There is a little bit, a little bit more to do. So, but no problem, right? We just add the next iteration. Okay, first I adopt the test data to have more uh, interface, so I have here now a, a function I can call. That's the only, only thing. But I, want, I need to design the interface. Now let's talk about the interface. What, what do I have? I cannot make the expensive because, remember, it's a lazy type. I cannot make lazy dot work because no dot operator for me, cannot do nice things. So I need either to, to implement a, a getter like this one, or I need to use the error operator like optional does, or the other way of dereferencing address operator, which is not that nice, but let's draft the interface. Let's see how it looks with the get operation and the error, and the, the error operation, this one. And of course, it's not what we want, but we have to choose something. So we take what the optional does and end up with this one because it's the shortest to write. And yeah. OK, we have the interface. Now let's look at the implementation of the, the lazy type. I don't know what it is yet now, so I, I, I abstract it away and make a lazy storage. And we'll care about the details a little bit extra. But I, can, I, I at least can implement now um, the error operator for accessing it. So my first try is to use the unit pointer. Even if I said, OK, it will not work, but, but just to make the first iteration work. We use the unique pointer. If we don't have a unique pointer, we add something. Then we get it. And now, hey, cool, test is working. I have something I can already send out that people can use it. We have, of course, release note. Hey, it does for heap allocations, so let's wait for version 2. But please use it, right? And people using it, and we get feedback. So what we need now is fixing some details. So the first thing is, is fixing the, uh, the detail, the, the feedback detail, where I said, hey, I would like to have a const here, people using it. I said, well, wait, this is a lazy class, right? You have deferred initialization. It changes the state. But the user said, well, yeah, who cares, right? I have my config class. From time to time, it needs to do the expensive stuff and get the values from remote. And otherwise, it should be const. User should not be able to, to change it. I said, OK, you have convinced me I need to do something. And we still have also the, the storage. So with the const, we have two problems. The one thing is that lazy storage is not const. And the other thing is that we have a const op, uh, overload for the error operator. So let's, let's fix this. My class is unchanged. This is already nice. So here we add two things. We add the mutable keyword. So this can be changed, even if it's const. And we uh, add the overload for const. And with these changes, the tests already work. We can, we can ship the next iteration. Hey, please use it. And I will care while you test it about the, the storage implementation and remove the heap allocation. OK, but the users are annoying, you know. They come back with something. Hey, even my embedded device has multiple CPUs these days. And you know this nice config class. We read from it in multiple threads. So can you please make this work? So yes, of course, we made it already. So what this test is basically doing, it, it adds a bunch of threads that all busy wait for a start signal, and then they call this one function, and we just want to have it one time initialized. So this is what this, this slide test code makes. But it works. So OK, let's implement it. Lazy stays un unchanged in my class. This stays also unchanged. This is nice. So I can now focus on my implementation in the lazy storage. This has to change a little bit. Um, if I would make a one hour talk at the conference, so I would not stretch it and go, but I will not do the final solution because we want to go to the mingle part. So um, this is the storage part. The storage is just. Um, memory. Then here I use two atomic variables, if it's initialized and if it has data. The storage at the end is empty. 
when I run, request the first time the, the object, the first one exchanged uh, the, the value we have. If it says, hey, you need an initialization, it goes here, it places the type into the storage. And when this is done, it's, it says has the data. Otherwise, when I'm not the first one and I go directly here, I have to wait until this one has set. Okay, so this is hopefully log free and I don't need to mess around with, with mutexes. And now I have this, this initialization done. I need two additional operators, the get operator for non-constant const. Um, I have to admit, I'm not totally sure about the lambda on this place. Um, the, I've read the documentation, it's not totally clear. We definitely have a storage that we initialize, it has no type. Then we put a type on it, it can even be const. The thing is why I put it here, even if I'm not 100% sure, is if I would need it and it's not there, I have undefined behavior. So in this case, I just say to the compiler, please don't optimize things away that might change later because you think this storage has already a value that is constant, you make assumptions on this, on this storage. And I think also the, the, the memory layout um, needs this. So this is the get us, but let's hope that some language expert, maybe one day will, will tell me. But at the moment, I think it's, it's not wrong to have it here. Then the, the one that um, constructors that I want to have is of course the default constructor. I want to be the lazy movable and I need to, to have the destructor. So if we have the data, again, um, get the type and then call the destructor by hand because the destructor might do things and we don't know the type anymore. And the operations I don't want to have, uh, everything that has to do with copy and assignment will change. This is where I said no, user no, because if you want multi-thread and this doesn't work good together. Okay, so and now this test case, all right, it works. That's it. We ship, we are done, no heap allocation, everything fine. We have even the unit tests. So short summary on the topic. We start with tests, that's always good. We develop iterative and only what is requested. Very often it's, oh, if a user wants to do this and if a user wants to do that, and I always got it wrong. The users always want to do something different. So if you make libraries, think about that. And we can do a lot with wrapper types. So this laser is, is one example, right? But if you think back, I mean, how many years is this now? Some years I gave it presentation const as a type, and const should be in many use cases a type. It had the same problem. It was just a wrapper, and then I needed to abuse the error operator. And if you think it's not me, it's also Bjorn Faller in his type last, uh, in his, his talk about types last summer, the must init type that just takes a type that is partial constructed and that is a constructor that you make the full construction out of it. It has also no member functions. So why can we not have here the dot operator? It makes simply no sense. Uh, the top operator, this is what Bjorn Strostrup says to it in paper P1962, there's a revision zero. C++ is not complete with operator dot or equivalent. What Bjorn Strostrup says. In the very first book, The Design and Evolution of C++ is a whole chapter about smart references. And maybe this word smart references is already this, what it is the problem, right? If I say, hey, I need simple rep wrapper type, I don't need a smart reference. Give me my simple wrapper type, then we would have not this stupid discussion. Oh my God, you could shoot in your foot, right? I mean, this is the, the reason why it's not part of the language yet. Some people are in opposition because you could shoot in your foot. Everything else, they can blow their foots away, they don't care, but this one, no. I, I, I don't get it, right? There is a, a background thread, uh, a blog post on the ISO CPP. Astrostrope explains it, it's controversial. You cannot make it so that it's, that it never blow your foot away, but yeah. And then there is from 2014, about these two papers, from Astrostrope and Gabriel Dos Reis, and I think this should be implemented. Unfortunately, they are there and they got no attention. Maybe this can be changed, this would be fine. And that's actually my part and this small lightning talk. And if you have questions, then please feel free to ask me now. Yes? I wonder if you couldn't be 
doing this without uh, as data needs data flag? Could go back to that slide. Could well, I yes, it's an implementation detail. What? It is an implementation detail. You could maybe ask if they initialize storage. You could, for yeah, sure, I yes. Have this in, uh, in CPP reference, they propose a pattern where you use a local static for singletons. Yes, but then it's, it's, it's a, a static. But uh, you want to have multiple instances of lazy, maybe with the same type. Then you cannot use a static variable. Okay. And the init once pattern is a little bit complex, so, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, uh, but of course, this is a, it's an implementation detail. So for, for you who haven't heard it, the, 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 the topic was, if the init function, if I go back to here when I find it, this one here, if yeah. this could not be implemented differently, and I said, yes, it can be implemented differently. Yeah, but the static, of course, fails. St static will not work, yes. Yeah, sorry. Please. You can do that with the std once and the once handle inside the Yes, there is a used once, this is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, it, it, it caps, uh, encapsulates the stuff and uh, ensures that it's once. But um, yeah, this is. You can put the handle for that. Mm? Yeah, not not sure what will be the benefit. But I said this is implementation details. There are for sure three, four, five ways to implement this as as for everything. Hmm. Yes, please. Uh, can you speak a little bit louder? That I hear. Oh, Twenty six I used What? The address of also because I'm drafting the, the, the interface and I return the address. And so I use as to the address of. So this is, of course, the, the, the draft interface to just implement these, these tests, right? Because I don't have the lazy storage at this moment. So, so I think the question is why you didn't use an ampersand? Oh, because, yeah, I mean, in, for this case, I would have to actually whitewash the type because user could give me anything. They could also give me a pointer. <laughs> so, yeah. So so why do I, why do I use uh, address of and not the ampersand? And there is some. Uh, Acuity with the ampersand operator. This is why as the address of has been added. I don't know which standard version. And this gets the way, especially when you're in template land and it's muscle memory meanwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now that Sweden has the full template standards committee, can we do something about the process operator? <laughs> um, I don't think that it works like this. Um, I mean, yes. I mean, we can talk about this and say, hey, we would like to have it, right? And spread the word in the community. And maybe a miracle happens and the people that are in this, this strong opposition, they say, hey, wait, it's not about the smart references with all the, what they mean with the smart references, because I want simple things, right? What I show here with this type, with constancy type, with what I say from Björn Faller, these are super simple things and that would make so much sense. And let's start with just, hey, I don't have any member operators, right? We don't need to discuss if I, if I have a member operator in my wrapper type under the type which I wrap, which one do I need a new keyword for overloading it or whatever. Let, let's just let me give you the, the constructors, destructors, and I can make the, the plus minus as free function operators, right? And this would be a nice first step. And if we have this, then maybe then things would develop. But since we choose maybe the smart reference and this, oh my God, you know, Maybe this is the problem. So I, I will, of course, I mean, I will, you see, I have now one presentation for the topic. I have a second presentation. And I might try to get this a little bit on, on, on wider scope. But honestly, I don't think that I will become old enough. To <laughs> but, but maybe miracle happens. It would be nice. I said the paperwork is there. It just needs to be, let's make this paper a reality. Anything else at the moment? OK, then I would say you have listened long enough. Let's make now a mingepad, and we will meet here in an hour, or whenever I call you back. Yeah, Cool, thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>